today. So I'm a lone wolf again, but that's all right. Because today is my birthday. Today is my birthday. So I can wear a goofy shirt if I want. Okay, I got balloons. Yeah. <laughs> I got balloons. Look at all this fun I'm having right here on my birthday with you guys at my special Midnight Movie Middays Mayhem birthday show. Woo! That's so much fun. Really? Actually, I don't like balloons too much. They scare me. They have a tendency to pop. Right, right in my nose, so, um, but, hey, well, we're going to have a little fun today, I got a lot to do today, being on my birthday, I'm traveling, I'm doing some stuff, uh, I've got a great exciting weekend planned, so it's going to be a lot of fun, but let's get started, oh man, hey, I started reading from last week's, uh, <laughs> this week's notes, happy donut day, it says, get rid of that, really? Keep your old notes laying around here. So, like I said, as you can see, I'm the lone wolf today. I'm going to try to see these comments here. They, they taught me how to do this, but if anybody makes a comment, maybe I'll see it. Maybe not. I don't know. If not, I apologize again. But I'm the lone wolf. Denny had to back out the last minute. I forgot he's got some relatives visiting. So I said, no problem, Denny. No problem. I can do the show by myself on my birthday. <laughs> Anyways, it's not that big a deal. Uh, what we got some shout outs today. Okay, shout out to Eddie. Eddie, you finally got your package. I was getting worried. I was like, come on. Uh, you know, I mailed it through the regular post office. It's like, it should be that hard to deliver a simple letter. You've been doing it for a couple hundred years. So I'm glad you got that. Uh, shout out to Patrick Keeney from the uh, Big Chuck and Little John page. Always does a great job keeping us up to date on, on fun stuff on that page. Um, Jay Summers, keep working on that band, brother. Um, celeb birthdays today. So I was wondering who else was born. What celebrities were born on the same day as me? Well, I'm not seeing no comments on here, guys. So I apologize. I, they taught me, they trained me. Oh, there's Chris. Hi, Chris. Now I'm seeing something. Now I'm getting a little action going there. Hi, Chris. We'll see. Maybe it'll work. Anyways, today's Neil Patrick Harris, Doogie Howser's birthday. So he was born on June 15th as well. Courtney Cox. Oh, she like to be her friend. <laughs> she was born today. Jim Belushi, 68 years old today. Jim Belushi. Uh, Helen Hunt. Remember Helen Hunt? I can't believe she's actually younger than me, but Helen Hunt. Leah Remini. Yeah, Lena Remini. Oh, I used to, I used to, um, to love her on TV. Ice Cube. It's his birthday today. Ice Cube, the rapper. Check this again. How did I do that before? Oh, well, guys. Hello, I'm Chris. Hello. <laughs> anyway, so today I'm, I'm 61 years old. Today. I mean, I'm 50 today. I can't believe I'm turning 50 years old today. And look, I have a cake here. Like, like I, I promised, and I'm going to tell you the story behind it. Yes, it's frosted with potted meat. Who likes potted meat? Has, have you ever tried it? Armor's potted meat in a can. I frosted my cake with it today. And you're probably wondering, like, are you crazy? Frosting your cake with potted meat? Well, I'm going to tell you the story behind this. If anybody's interested, see if I can get comments. I don't get no comments on this page. Uh, this thing, I, not good. Not not good. All I get is Chris Cross. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Chris. Why are these comments will pop up here? Oh, well. But like I said, if I don't see your comments, I go on it later. Because we post this so you can watch it later. And I go back and I read them and I comment. Because uh, they're really funny to me. But anyways, a potted meat. When I was a kid, see, I'm thinking back, back. Back when I was a kid now, because I'm reliving my childhood, this was my favorite lunch. Would come home and my father would have me a bowl of chicken noodle soup, Campbell's, and a potted meat sandwich. I love potted meat. We used to go downtown, there was a place called the Supplementary Center, and we would take field trips there. The whole elementary school would go down to the Supplementary Center. All these other schools would come. This place is kind of legendary 
uh, around the Cleveland area because a lot of people remember going there, but nobody can really exactly remember where it was. And I don't think it's no longer in existence, but it's called the Supplementary Center, and you would have to take a lunch. So my dad would always make me potted meat sandwich because one, I don't think it requires any refrigeration. I don't want, I don't want to see why, but why? But anyways, I would take that on my favorite sandwich. I loved it so much. I would, I would eat these all the time. So one day I made a mistake. I actually read, I read on the, uh, well, I'm reading now is a little different, but I actually read on the ingredients and it had tripe in it. Let me see if it still has it in there. I don't see it now, or maybe they just disguise it. But it used to say tripe. Oh, good. I don't see it in there no more. Maybe they took it out. But then I couldn't eat it anymore. I was like, oh, tripe. Oh, I couldn't eat it. But just this week, I said, you know what? I want to try it again because I remembered it. And I liked it so much, I thought, what fun it would be to decorate my birthday cake with potted meat. Won't that be fun for us to eat together? So we'll, we'll have a bite of that later at the end of the show uh, to celebrate my birthday. My potted meat frosted cake. We try a lot of different challenges on the show, so I said, why not? I'll try it right here. It might be good. It might, it might, no, it's cheaper than frosting. That's only like a buck for a can of that at the dollar store. A lot cheaper than frosting, so you could frost your, uh, frost anything with it. Mix it with a little mayonnaise. Oh, that's, that's good stuff. Um, oh, so anyways, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older or what, but here's an interesting story that occurred just yesterday. Uh, as I was getting ready to shoot an episode of the Midnight Movie, I was getting my stuff all together, and I was just about to go out the door, and I went to get my hat. It's my favorite hat. So as I went to get my favorite hat, I open up my closet where I keep all my hats. I have a nice hat collection up there. This one's always in the front. It's not up there. I'm like, are you kidding me? I just wore it at the Horror Hotel Convention all weekend. I know it's here at the house. So I tore the whole house apart. I went through that closet several times. I was in the garage. I was in the basement. I was everywhere. Could not find my favorite hat. So I go to the, to the show. Denny picks me up. We're riding together. And I said, Denny, did you happen to find my favorite hat in your car? Because he gave me a ride home for the horror hotel convention. He's like, no, but there might have been a hat in a box when we were packing up for the convention. So long story short, he gets home and he tears through all the boxes, goes through all the convention boxes, looks through his car, looks through all these things. He's tearing apart. My wife's going through the house while I was at the show. She was looking for the hat. She was going, she thought she had found it, but it wasn't, it wasn't the hat. Anyways, I get home last night, and I'm like, man, I'm really worried because it's my favorite hat. So I go back into that closet for about the 18th time, and I look up there, and there it was. Sitting in the very front, but it was backwards, so I didn't see this. But it was right there the whole time. So that got me thinking a little bit, it was like, Am I losing it? Am I getting old? Am I, am I getting, like, forgetful? It was right in front of me, and I didn't see it. So that, that taught me, you know what, today's theme might be interesting to talk about a few uh, movies based on amnesia. And not just the ones. I'm not going to talk about The Hangover or, or The Born Identity or any of those. But I did look for some older ones that was, like, mysteries. But they were based with the, the main character or somebody in the movie had amnesia. And it, it led to this whole mystery. So some these are pretty interesting. The first one is Charlie Chan at the Opera. With, I think it was Warner Olin as Charlie Chan. Um, if you ever watched Charlie Chan, remember the old Big Chuck and Little John? They used to play Charlie Chan. Um, not as much fun as Sherlock Holmes, but eh, he was all right. Um, but that was 1936, Charlie Chan at the Opera. This one was a go with Ingrid Bergman called Spellbound, 1945, Spellbound, Ingrid, Ingrid Bergman. Uh, Somewhere in the Night, 1946. Um, let me look at this here real quick. Let me check. Oh, yeah, I got some comments. I got Gary's on here. Thank you, Gary. Mike's making fun of my wine. Ellie, what kind of wine would you serve with potted meat? You know what? Probably Boone's Farm apple. That's like a good uh, good age, you know, from maybe a 2023 vintage. Um, I'm probably wearing it, okay? Yeah, I wasn't wearing it. I'm, I was wearing my flame hat, which is my second favorite. Um, Memento, top five film. Memento, Memento. That's top five of my amnesia movies? Okay, if you say so. 
Uh, but I got Somewhere in the Night, 1946. I got the October Man, 1947. See, these are older, older ones that, you know, you don't normally probably see. This one sounds pretty interesting. Mr. Arkadin, starring Orson Welles. It's an Orson Welles film, so it's got to be pretty good. i got to check that one out. Of course, Vertigo, 1958, with uh, Alfred Hitchcock, James Stewart. The Manchurian Candidate, 1962, the famous John Frankenheimer film that was remade, but I'll stick with the original. Um, and here's an interesting one i got to see. Uh, this, I think it was the first, there was a series of films, I, I wasn't even aware of this. It's called The Ipcris File. Michael Caines, he plays, and I don't want any jokes about this, all right, Triv. He plays a spy called Harry Palmer. <laughs> I don't want any jokes about that, because I know what you guys are thinking. Don't even say it. Terry Palmer. Uh, but I guess he went on and did four more films as that character. It's one of those 60s spy films. I never knew that. I'm going to have to look that up. I didn't know Michael Caine was in a series of spy films. Uh, I like Michael Caine, so I'm going to check that one out. But he plays Harry Palmer. Hmm. Crickets. I hate crickets. Uh, Hysteria, 1965. Oh, Mirage, 1965, with Gregory Peck. You're right, Trip. I do have Memento, Memento on here, which was an early Christopher Nolan film. So I have it on my list, Trip. What do you think about that? You got Mouse in the house. Joel's watching. Uh, Trip says, hey, Mouse. Well, hey, Mouse, how you doing? Today, see, I chose not to, to turn on the backdrop today so you could see the happy birthday banner since we're celebrating me. As you can see, all my friends are here with me. Um, but those are some films that dealt with amnesia. So that's a pretty interesting subject. And as they'd say in New York, forget about it, right? Forget about it. Uh, what's going on this week? Well, this weekend is the big Monster Bash Film Festival up in Myers, Pennsylvania. If you can, get there. It's a whole lot of fun. A lot of the, the horror hosts are going to be there. Doc Dredd's going to be there. Drake and Corita are going to be there. I'm going to be there walking around having a good time. And there's going to be a, a couple other horror hosts there. Roman Hall's Son of Ghoul's going to be there. It's always a great time. And they got some great guests. You can see these comments again. Okay. They got some great guests too. Uh, Dan Robach is going to be there this weekend. He's the new Grandpa Monster from the new Monsters movies. But he's been in so much stuff. The Fugitive. Uh, he played Jay Leno in the movie. He was, he's been in a lot of Rob Zombie films. Uh, you probably know him from Matlock, one of the early Matlocks. Uh, Dan Roebuck's going to be there. A lot of fun. A friend of the Midnight Movie, so make sure you stop by, pick something up from him, say hello, tell him the Midnight Movie sent you, and he'll send you a packing, I'm sure. Um, Audrey Dalton's going to be there. She was from the Monster that Challenged the World. You remember that one? That's an oldie but a goodie. Can we show it, Rocco? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, he also, she was also in Mr. Sardonicus. Mr. Sardonicus, if you remember that one. Let me check these again. Bring your bats. Joel, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Give me some comments. Explain yourself. Um, if you don't know who Joel is, it's Mouse from the Ghoul Show. He did all that cool art, and he did our, our backdrop when it's on. And he does all kinds of uh, great art. And he has the uh, cartoon, The Sheltered Life, which he has on Facebook. You can watch, go to The Sheltered Life on Facebook, and you can see a lot of his great cartoons based on his everyday pitiful life. Just kidding, Joel. They're very good, very thoughtful. Some of them are thought-provoking, so very good uh, series. Beverly Washburn is going to be there this weekend. She was from Spider Baby with Lon Chaney, which is pretty cool in itself. I was doing a little research on her, though. She was in, like, Star Trek with, you know, with uh, Nimoy and, and, um, and Channer. She worked with Lou Costello. She worked with George Reeves, Boris Karloff, Milton Berle, so many more. I can't wait to talk to her about some of these people now that I, I did a little research on her. I didn't think she was old enough to work with some of these people, but she worked with Lou Costello in his only dramatic role where he played an alcoholic in an episode of, I think it was Wagon Train or something like that, so... His only um, dramatic role that she appeared in it with him. This thing only likes to react to, to my thumb. Sometimes I don't like to react at all. It don't want, here we go. 
There we go. I got a, a laugh out loud from Joel. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so who else is going to be there? Oh, and if you love The Legend of Boggy Creek, okay, one of our favorites on the Midnight Movie, well, Charles Pierce's daughter is going to be there, Pamela Pierce. She not only is an actress and his daughter, but she also, she appeared in The Legend of Boggy Creek in 1972. She was in the sequel, The Legend of Boggy Creek, The Legend Continues. And she also worked on getting the new uh, remastered version that's out right now. So you could pick up a copy from her, talk to her about her father's work, talk to her a little bit about the Boggy Creek. And um, hey, and Tom Savini's going to be here fresh from being at the uh, Living Dead weekend this past weekend. Tom Savini, we all know who Tom Savini is. Okay, he is a horror makeup icon. So he's going to be there at the Monster Bash show. That will be a lot of fun if you can make it there this weekend. I highly recommend that you do so. Okay. All right, what else we got going on here? Hey, speaking of, like I said, we were just at the Horror Hotel this past weekend, and we had a great time. Thanks to everybody that came out, stopped by the table, picked up some merchandise. We appreciate that. Uh, shout out. To Scott and Janet and Emily that came all the way from Lorain, Ohio to meet us and get some merchandise. It was great talking to you. Gary Smith dropping by the table. Sean, um, Mike, so many people dropped by our table, said hi. We had a really fun time um, hanging out with their friends, seeing everybody. Um, so thanks for having us at the Horror Hotel Convention. Uh, uh, Lamia was the host of her show and she did a fantastic job. So thank you very much for that. And to all the great filmmakers that were there and shared some of their uh, their films with us, um, a lot of uh, cool movies that we hope to be seeing. And so a lot of great up-and-coming actors, actresses, directors, filmmakers, scriptwriters, everything. It was a whole, a whole slew of them there, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, and as always, I have to say, you know, you can watch the Midnight Movie every Sunday, every Friday night at midnight on Spectrum Cable. When we do a maritime that runs all day Saturday, and then Saturday night at midnight or Sunday morning is our brand new show, of which we do at least 50 brand new shows every year. So a brand, 50 brand new uh, two-hour shows practically each and every week of the year. See us on Spectrum, Spectrum Cable 180, uh, Cox Cable. You can catch us on Channel 45. They're working on getting a new server. I'm excited about that, so hopefully our uh, newer you know, shows, they won't just keep repeating stuff. Uh-oh. Lost myself there for a second. I lost myself. Uh, but you can also watch us on Tingler Television on the Roku. Get yourself a Roku. And this is the cheapest one, like $29 at Walmart, okay? You have internet in the house and an HDI thing in the back of your TV. You can plug this in. And you can watch, you don't have to buy like Netflix and all those, you can get the free channels, of which Tingler Television is a free channel. We're on there every Tuesday night at 9 o'clock on Tingler Television. We're also on the Betamax channel, another free channel that you can download. Um, and they, they actually archive our shows, so you can watch them on demand. Or you can watch us online at the Monster Channel on the Vortex. Or, as always, you can go to the midnightmovie.net and you can watch new episodes on the showcase. So, um, shout out to the Great Lakes Game Emporium and Mentor. We were there a few weeks ago. The episode should be coming up shortly. Uh, we had a lot of fun out there. We did some skits. So thanks for John for having us out there. Uh, they're trying to lure Triv back there with this thing game. They're going to teach him how to play the move, the the game, the thing. So he picked that up. So we'll see what happens if if they do. I want to take the cameras out there. We got to watch Triv playing the thing. What well, says you, Triv? Ah, uh, Joel says he has lots of open space. Come on, Joel, on your walls. I never know what time it is. Can you help? Do you know what time it is? Yeah, it's uh, 12, 12, 16, Joel, something like that. I don't know where you're coming from today, Joel. Where are you? Are you all right? Are you okay out there, buddy? Free space on your walls. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Hinting for one of those clocks. Well, you know, guess what? Maybe I'll dig one up for you, Joel. I have to look around. Clocks are a popular item. We got a couple headed out today. So, um, and special thanks to our super fan, Mark Pinto. If you've seen, if you've seen, if you saw, better watch it because Trevor will be all over my English lessons there. And there I go, logging myself off again. Um, it doesn't go on a wall, Joel. It just sits there. Um, I forget what I was even talking about. Anyhow, the Great Lakes Game Emporium. Uh, those episodes will be coming up very shortly, and we had a lot of fun out there. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you can call us. Call the hotline number, 440-944-7105. We really have a lot of fun getting messages from you guys and listening to them, and we play a lot of them on the uh, show. Uh, we really enjoy them, so send us a message. You want to do a shout-out to us. If you have a favorite movie, you want to make a comment about the show, um, uh, you like the way I dress, whatever, call 440-944-7105. Nobody's really going to answer. It's going to be a chance for you to leave a message so you don't have to be, like, fearful that somebody's going to answer the phone and uh, leave us a cool message. And we would appreciate it. And there I go, logging myself off again. Look like I'm logging myself back in real quick. What else we got going on here? Let me read these things. Those are old. Okay, I went through all this stuff here. Oh, another cool show that's coming up, and I had to... Uh, I don't have it up here now. But our friend Travis Bowen is throwing a cool show, the Cleveland Toy and Collectibles Show, which is going to be November 25th and 26th. I know, right? After Thanksgiving, so it'll be a perfect time to go walk off some of those pounds that you got from all that eating, right? Uh, it's going to be right back at the Best Western Plus, right here in Strongsville, right, 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 right off Route 82. Uh, the Cleveland Toy and Collectible Show. Now, if you know Travis, he always does a great show. He always has some great guests, and this time is, is no different. Uh, he just gave me a few right now, and he's working on some even, I don't want to say bigger, but more stars. He always has great stars. So far, he's got Deep Roy coming. Remember Deep Roy, that, that little guy? From Star Wars, from Charlie and the Chocolate Fam Factory, he's going to be there. Deep Roy's going to be there. Um, Chelsea Kalmich from Stranger Things. So if you watch the Stranger Things, if you're a Stranger Things fan, she's going to be there. And here's a big one, I guess. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, but I guess he said that's, that's pretty exciting. Tiana Benjamin from the Harry Potter series is going to be there. So he's got, I think he's working on trying to get a few other Harry Potters, but at least he's got one Harry Potter Actress is going to be there, and that's just the start. Now remember, that's called the Cleveland Toy and Collectible Show. It's going to be November 25th and 26th this year. So it's coming up quick. And Midnight Movie's going to be there. Yeah, I'm coming in special. I'm cutting my vacation short just so I can come home and be at this show because it's always such a great time. Travis throws a heck of a show. So um, we're going to see you there, hopefully. We're looking forward to that. See if we've got any comments here. Let's see what we've got here. Um, yeah, it takes me a it takes me a while. Oh, well, you know what? I don't I have the posters here. I don't have the clocks in here. The clocks are in storage at the shipping facility. But I do have the posters. And we, hey, we sold a lot of these posters, guys. These are our limited edition, limited to if we sell out or not. Uh, our 25th anniversary posters, okay, and there's a set of three. This is the one that was most popular because, of course, we get to sign on them and stuff like that. But we also have we have that one, which this is cool because it has all the old movies that we showed. It's very cool. Designed by Mr. Mark Pinto himself. That's what I was saying earlier. Shout out to Mark Pinto for sending me that cool birthday thing that I, that I shared on the uh, thing today when I was announcing the show. Thank you, Mark, and the whole family. Thank you, the Pintos. Um, and there's another one. So we have those. We have them come see us, or you can even probably uh, go see Denny on uh, MidnightMovie.net if you want one. You can order one from there. We'll autograph it or do whatever you want. Um, but come, come, we're out live. Come see us. But we had a lot of fun. Uh, people were buying these, and we were autographing them, except for Vern. Okay. You, like, remember when you collected bubblegum cards? And you'd always get all the bubblegum cards, but there's always a few that were elusive. 
Vern is the elusive bubblegum card because we were all there signing, but Vern was supposed to be there, but he was never there when people wanted him to sign. So he's like the elusive bubblegum card. So if you can track down the very elusive Vern signature on your poster, it's like it's like getting that rare card. You'll have a complete set. So Vern, you're a lost bubblegum card. All right. That's my analogy. Oh, okay. Let's see what they're saying. Thank you, Hollis. Oh, speaking of Hollis, look, Hollis and Ed wished me happy birthday last week early because they thought I was going to be out of town. Look what they sent me. They're so generous. They sent me this special vintage uh, comic book. All oh, nice. Look, I'm not opening it. Sealed, sealed with love. See those hearts? I'm not opening it, but it's it's the Lone Ranger's famous horse, Silver. Okay, a vintage comic book they gave to me for my birthday, and I so appreciate it. That was in my vault. I actually brought it out so I want to show everybody. Thanks, Hollis, for popping in here because I want to show everybody. But isn't that cool? I didn't know he had a comic book. I didn't. I don't want to open it. I don't want no air to touch it. I mean, that, that's that cool. But I appreciate that because I do the Midnight Ranger. Um, they like the Midnight Ranger, and I like doing it. And I did not expect that. So thank you, Hollis and Ed, very much for the generous gift. Um, I mean, that, that's awesome. I'd like to read it, but I don't want to open it. Ten cents. Dell, ten cents. Can you imagine that? Comics now, they're like three or four dollars. I can't even afford it. A few years ago, I was collecting Batman. Uh, no, I had to stop. It's too, it's too expensive. Uh, Ellie, you, wanted, you, you know what? I did bring that up, Ellie, about doing the calendar. You're right. As a matter of fact, a good uh, uh, one of our fans, you know, Gary. Oh, man, now I'm having a, a mental fart. But your friend, he always made us those cool calendars every year, and he'd give them to us at Glarney Fest. Oh, man, what's his, what's his name now? I can't think. Of, I, just, I was just looking at it yesterday. But he always made us those cool calendars. You're right. We could do a, a, the beefcake of the midnight movie. What do you think? We could have, see there's how many is there. There's, there's Rocco. There's me, Triv, Vern, Denny. Terry, if we could get him out of his slumber. There's six of us. We could each do two months. We'd cover the whole year. Oh, maybe we could get like a, a random, you know, like Todd or somebody on there. Huh? That's a good idea, Ellie. Maybe we'll all do that. Of course, it's always time for the midnight movie. Come on. iPads and me don't get along. It'll work sometimes. Oh, ah, whoa. What's that? I don't want that. Go away. There we go. Hi, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. How you doing? See, I got to read this. So backwards reading this. I like this shirt. I thought it was a day for crazy shirts. I brought out my crazy. My wife does not like when I wear this shirt. I don't know why. So colorful. I feel like I'm in Hawaii or something. Uh, what else have we got? Well, I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna eat my birthday cake. I bet you want a, a bite of that too. Special. Potted meat frosted birthday cake. Oh man. Oh, let me, oh I was going to uh, see. I don't think I have that. Let me look through the files here. Uh, look at the file because I wanted. To, oh, here we go. Right here. I wanted to mention to you the Cleveland Horror Club is having a cool event that's coming up July 28th at the Winchester in Lakewood. Okay, that's a nice little pub there. They're having a screening of Shaun of the Dead. There's going to be vendors, um, all kinds of stuff. Bands playing, I think five bands playing, vendors. They're showing Shaun of the Dead. That's the Cleveland Horror Club. Uh, that's July 28th at the Winchester. Now we're going to keep watching the Cleveland Horror Club because they're doing events like every couple of months. And next year, they're going to have a big convention, okay? Uh, hopefully we'll be there, and it's going to be at the Best Western Plus. Again, the Best Western Plus is getting a lot of action. As you know, it's the home of the Cinema Wasteland show. So, at any rate, the Cleveland Horror Club, the Winchester in Lakewood, July 28th, Shaun of the Dead. If you go, if you contact them, tell them the Midnight Movie sent you. All right. Let's, what else I got here laying around? Oh, I found this yesterday, too. What's your favorite... Candy bar as a child that you can't find anymore. I found the Zagnut. That's one of my favorites. Um, I had to buy a couple when I found it. They're very they're hard to find, at least fresh ones. <laughs> so I got the Zagnut. But what's some of your favorite candy bars? 
like a marathon bar or something like that. Skyway, remember those old candy bars? We love my shirt, Amanda. Thank you. Kevin Zapata. My old buddy Kevin Zapata's popping on there. Hi, Kevin. How you doing? Um, Quantico, buddy. Quantico. I was just watching that a couple days ago, and I thought about you. Quantico. As a matter of fact, I got a couple deep, dark woods heading out to a client this weekend. So they're still they're still moving like like a turtle. They're moving out, but they're still they're not forgotten. Still going out there. So uh, shout out to Kevin Zapata. Um, I'm looking around the whole thing here. Let me check here. Um, you like that headstone? Be afraid. I got you know I got almost as much stuff on my own set here as we have on a regular midnight movie set. I was just joking yesterday at the midnight movie set. If you ever watch the beginning of the show, Rocco takes the camera down the hallway. That hallway is getting cool now. It's starting to get more and more stuff down the hallway. It's almost like a cavern, a pool. So the camera goes down that hallway, and then it goes and you see, go into the set and you see us. But keep an eye on that hallway because he's always putting up cool stuff on there. And pretty soon that whole hallway is going to be covered. We're not going to have any more space, and we're still pulling out stuff. We're still finding stuff. We found a bunch of our um, artwork and stuff yesterday. We were looking for the Tumas. We're looking for Scott Tumas drawings. We still haven't found those. But we found a lot of our uh, our posters and things like of that nature. Um, so we're pulling out stuff. Okay, here's, oh, come on now, watch my call. It's lemon heads. Ah, lemon heads are good. Matter of fact, lemon heads are good. Peanut M&Ms. They still make peanut M&Ms, don't they? Yeah, they still make peanut M&Ms. Um, yeah, I was, I was just seen the hallway. Lemon heads are good. We used to always go up to the corner store when I was a kid, and you could get a box of lemon heads for a quarter. And we always got lemon heads. Never those other ones, that, you know, sour, whatever. We always got the lemon heads. So, and remember Halloween, the wax harmonicas? I wish I could find another wax harmonica at Halloween. <laughs> oh, goofy stuff. All right, what we got, we got here? We're, I'm going to, guess what? I like because everybody's talking here. Hey, Thomas McCann's on there. Hi, Tom. Chico sticks. They still make those. They even got sugar-free ones, Amanda. I get the sugar-free ones at, at the um, at the um, Pia Sweeties. Sugar-free. Yeah, I love those. Oh. Ah. Chico sticks. What? Come on, Trip. Payday. Those are all. They still make those. I said that. that they don't make no more that they, they make, but they're hard to find. You can get all those anywhere. Come on, payday bar? Really? 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 Um, oh, I got to read from the book. I'm going to choose the page today. It's my birthday. Plus, this thing's acting up but goofy. So I'm going to choose. Hey, how'd you like my uh, Hogan's Heroes bobbleheads? Those are from the John Basso, the old ghoul, ghoul studio. Those are from the old ghoul studio. Courtesy of Mr. John Basso. Shout out to John Basso. Um, thanks for those. Enjoying those. Okay. Ooh. I, I opened this up here. Hippodrome. It's called Hippodrome. Okay. Oh, it was 1966. 1966, right in that cool era. Right? The Avengers and Batman and the Monkees and all those cool shows. Well, we got a circus variety show. Uh, 1966. Filmed in England as a summer replacement for the Red Skeleton Hour, and it featured a different celebrity host each week who introduced an assortment of acts that included many circus acts. Hmm, okay, maybe that's why it's called a circus variety show. Uh, then they also had variety show staples, singers, dancers, comedians. Some of the hosts were Alan Sherman. Remember that? Alan Sherman? I think, what's that? I, hello, mother. Hello, father. I think I've got malaria, whatever that song was. Woody Allen, Merv Griffin. Um, it didn't last long, though, guys. Sorry, only another one season or they don't last them. It was a summer replacement series. Uh, let's see what else. What else we got? What's this one? What's The Master? That one sounds good. The Master. 1984, The Master. Whoa, I thought it was the one I thought. I thought it was the one I thought. That sounds like uh, the Tweety. Don't I thought it was the one I thought. I thought he thought what he get. Uh, I did, I did. Don't make fun of me. Uh oh. I wonder how many times he's going to do that. 
Beerman's Blackjack, Clove Gum. Those are old, Joe. You can get those on Amish Country, I think. Anyways, the master started Lee Van Cleef. Oh! He was a bad guy from one of those cool uh, Clint Eastwood westerns with the long gun. His gun was like, like a mile long. Lee Van Cleef. Timothy Van Patten from the famous Van Patten acting family, right? Uh, Sho Kosuko was in it. Let's see. Stealth and hand-to-hand -hand violence were the hallmarks of this short-lived series. Oh, who doesn't like um, stealth and hand-to-hand -hand violence, right? While stationed in Japan as an Air Force colonel after World War II, John Peter McAllister, that was Lee Van Cleef, yep, he had become fascinated with the ninja, secret, and now outlawed society of warriors trained in the martial arts. Oh, he entered the sect and then time became a ninja master. The only Westerner to ever do so. And it's funny, they call him a Westerner because he's in all those Westerns, right? Right? Well, uh, when younger members of the sect begin to use their deadly skills for evil ends, he left for America, violating his sacred oath to never leave the ninja. There he meets young Max Keller, a footloose adventurer. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm footloose. Uh, and the two of them set out in Max's van. That sounds creepy. Searching for McAllister's long lost daughter and righting wrongs they encountered along the way. So there's kind of like a, like a, um, the van, the, the ninja van, the ninja van on wheels, almost like a Scooby Doo. Oh, hey, looks like we got another ninja on our hands. Oh, uh, <laughs> what, what happened here? Uh, hard on their heels were deadly ninja assassins led by Okasa, who were there after him. They had trained many of them. And, but he dispatched them with cunning swift blows and a variety of exotic weapons, such as razor-sharp little wheels that were thrown at the assailant, tiny smoke bombs, and a hand device to warn off blows. So a bunch of gadgets he had there. Don't sound like, really? A tiny smoke bomb? Uh, okay. That was called The Master with Lee Van Cleef. And that only aired one year, not even a year. But it, it sounds cool, and I kind of remember it. Except for Lee Van Cleef, it's kind of like watching uh, Steven Seagal these days do karate, you know. Uh, 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 not good. Um, final check of the comments here. Oh, man. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. Hey, happy birthday from my buddy Will, Big Will. Thanks, Big Will. Hey, thanks for coming out to the Horror Hotel and hanging out for a little while. Always good to see my bro out there. Um, and if you don't know Big Will... You, you'll probably see one of his skits coming up very soon in our 25th anniversary show. He is from the famous uh, Fountain of Goof skit. So we'll, we'll play that. Joe remembers the series, the, the Master? Yeah, it's like Lee Van Cleef is cool, but that's like watching, like I said, Steven Seagal do karate today. No, that's not good. No, right, Trip? Not good. Um, we're going to wrap this up today. Oh, I'm going to wrap it up with... Uh, Eating some of my potted meat frosted birthday cake. Yahoo! Okay. All right. I'm going to light the old candle. Really? <laughs> I got like a flamethrower and I can't light a candle. There we go. All right. Now, sing along with me at home. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, dear Richie. Happy birthday to me. Get, get over here, Fluffy. Get over here. Oh, my dog. Oh, my dog Fluffy wants to come in and say hi. Say hi, Fluffy. Say hi to the people, Fluffy. Hi. Say hi to the people. Now get out of here. All right, let's, we're going to try some of this. Now, I highly encourage you people to do some fun stuff, like on your birthday, do some fun stuff, okay? Live a little bit, okay? Get yourself a can of potted meat. There we go. <gasps> oh, gotta make a wish, gotta make a wish. Yeah, my wish is gonna come true. All right, oh. <coughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Okay, here we go. Take the whole, you can't take the candle out of your own cake. That's bad luck. Here we go. Mmm. 
that look delicious? Mmm, potted meat. Oh, it's got it's got everything I need in it too. It's got mechanically separated chicken, pork, water, vinegar, mustard, and nitrate. Oh, you gotta have your nitrate. That's good for you, right? Mmm, mmm. It's a nice mixture of salty and sweet. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm, that's pretty good. That's weird. I might have to bring this down for the guys to try in the midnight movie. Mmm. That's very good. Mmm. Pie meat frosting. I invented something new. All right, guys. <laughs> By the way, thanks to everybody that took time to wish me happy birthday on Facebook. I tried to keep up with them, but they kept coming in so fast. God bless all of you. Thanks for taking the time to think of me today. Tune in this weekend to the Midnight Movie. We've got a great show coming up this weekend, and we'd love to share it with you. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Be safe out there. And now I leave you with an empty seat. <laughs> mm. What's that? Oh, you want a close up? Can you see it? That's good. Get you a bite of that. Mm. That's good stuff. Mmm. Bye bye. <laughs>